Good morning and welcome to St. John Youths. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Our celebrant this morning is Father McNamara. Let us all stand and join in singing our opening song, All the Ends of the Earth. Everybody. Happy it's wonderful to see you all. In the Eastern Church, you know, in Greece and some of the Orthodox Christian churches, today they don't say Happy Easter, as you probably know. They say, Christ is risen. And the response is, He is risen indeed. There's a couple of Greeks here <laughs> from Russia, Ukraine. I'm happy to have Deacon Nestor with us, and I'm happy to have every one of you. And if you haven't been to church since Christmas, I don't care, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> if you haven't been for 20 years, if you think you're a sinner, if you think you're not worthy, you are. You are worthy, I don't know if you're a sinner, but I'm glad you're here. We are God's people, and we come to celebrate that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the risen Christ be with each one of you. Our quiet moment to apologize, to say we're sorry to our loving God. You came to give us new life, Lord of mercy. You came to take away our sins, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You came to encourage us how to live, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. 
O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praise. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ to only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the According to John, glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and so the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb 
first, he bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths then, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The last line of that gospel passage, John chapter 20, verse 9, said, They did not yet understand the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. You didn't hear verse 10. It said, Then they went home. And you didn't hear verse 11, which I wish you had heard, because it says, Meanwhile, Mary was weeping outside the tomb. Mary Magdalene found the empty tomb. The body of her friend was gone, and she was weeping. Many of you knew my brother, a priest Leslie. He died in February 21. I couldn't go to the funeral. It was the height of COVID, and I'd had to be in quarantine for two weeks. According to the Irish government, that was the rule. So I didn't get to go to his grave until a year and a bit afterwards. When I got there, it looked just like the photographs my brother had sent me. There was a two and a half foot black marble headstone with his name on it, sadly missed. And I stood there, having missed the funeral, grieving. I wasn't weeping like Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was weeping in sorrow. I'm not a crier, I guess. And there I was, thinking of the times we made gunpowder out of saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal, and tried to make bombs. <laughs> My childhood growing up with him, there were four boys, one bedroom, two beds. I always, the two eldest always slept together. So I was in the same bed with him for years and years. Both of us complaining about our cold toes. I remembered lots of things. When he became a priest. What he was like as a priest, as a brother, as a friend. I bet Mary Magdalene was remembering too. She saw Jesus die on the cross. She was there. And as I grieved, I finished my memory part. And I looked around and I saw all the crosses. Not too far away was the grave of my parents, grandparents, uncles, many others. And one grave of some cousins of mine. And it had engraved the cousin and husband had died. And the kids had put down a, someone had put a headstone. And on it it said, gone to God, and he is very close. And I left thinking about memories and moved into faith. Now, you didn't hear the rest of the story about Mary Magdalene today, but she went back and told the apostles. That's why Peter and John came to the empty tomb. But while she waited weeping, two angels came 
and someone else came that she didn't recognize through her tears. And for some reason, she thought he was the gardener until he called her by name and said, Mary. And then she met the risen Jesus, the first one. And in a culture and a world that was male-dominated, where all the power and authority was with males. Here is Mary, a woman who had seven demons, considered by many to be a sinner, the first one to be running to the apostles and saying, I've seen him. He's risen. She's often called the apostle to the apostles. And Mary moved from grief, as I tried to do at my brother's grave, she moved from grief to what the empty tomb meant, that you have to get away from the empty tomb into a place of hope and promise, because that's what Jesus was all about, hope and promise. And we are that people today, the people of hope and promise, who believe in the risen Christ. Many people will make lists and tell us how terrible the world is today. And the lists are probably true. I would make my own list of Ukraine and Gaza. It's a horror list of Sudan and Syria and Chad and the Uyghur people and all sorts of other things that are terrible happening in our world. We could probably make a list of what's happening among the maybe a thousand people here today. And the fear and anxiety and worry that some of you have, a pending divorce, job insecurity, a kid on drugs, an addiction yourself, going bankrupt. And in the midst of all that darkness, that empty tomb that Mary Magdalene experienced, she came away from it as a person of hope and promise. We are that people today. That's the way we live. Christ is risen. And however we live, and until we die, until that last moment happens, and when we know it's coming close, and we lie in a Northridge Hospital, West Hills, Kaiser, a rest home, in our own bed at home, we're still the people of hope living for the promise because we know there's more after this existence. And the challenge is that we follow that Christ here. And when we do, we are the people. And the promise gets fulfilled in this world. In 1930, Nicholas Bokharin, a member of the Politburo in the Soviet Union, he left Moscow. He was actually the editor of Pravda for a while. Left Moscow and went to Kiev to give a talk about atheism, the new faith of the Soviet people. And he talked brilliantly for an hour to 3,000 people. And when he finished, there was silence. And he said, is there any questions? And man walked from the middle of the audience up to the podium. And the man looked out at all these Ukrainians. And he said, Christ is risen. And they stood and yelled, he is risen indeed. That's us today. No matter what's happening, we're not stuck in an empty tomb. That risen Christ walks with us. He is risen indeed, and he's in all of our hearts. You get to do your baptismal promises instead of the creed, and we will have people sprinkling you with water as a reminder of that baptism. Let us stand. We are the people of the risen Christ, my brothers and sisters. We walk with him, we talk with him, we live with him. Now that our Lenten observance is over, 
we renew our baptism of promises, the promises made in so many churches last night by new members of our Catholic community. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. confident in our dear Lord's love for us and having a faith that he's always listening, we offer these prayers. That all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper unity among all Christians as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of initiation, may their witness of new life in God's bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us Christ save us when we were helpless. We too may save the helpless among us, including the poor, the unwelcome, and the unborn. We pray. For the sick and the homebound, especially Ella del Rosario, 
Julie Wall Kimmel, and Laarni Unto, and for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, for those gone before us in death, whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Max Berman. We pray for the repose of the souls of Linda Mercado and Asinta Murillo for the special intention of Gian Daryl Narbius for our need and intentions that we now recall in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Prayer. O God of salvation, in the beauty of this Easter day, set our minds on the new life to which you've called us. Hear and answer our deepest prayer, offer in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our peace, who is truly risen and lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As our altar is prepared, please join us in singing Hosanna.
my sisters and brothers, pray that our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We are God's family. Let's say our family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with each one of you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy. You stand to my roof. Only say the word.
please join us in singing our communion hymn, How Great is Our God.
Sunday one announcement. All you kids by age or by mentality <laughs> are invited to an Easter egg hunt, not in the grill hall, but in the Montal hall right after mass. Um, hope you have fun. Thank you all for being here. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And as we go forth, let us join in singing Resucito. Two, three, four, one.